want me to react to like all of the hunter the parenting stuff but i've seen episodes but there is um there are a couple of things i still haven't seen uh that one's like 45 minutes long um yeah, but that's like an hour. And debating on the the one with the cop or the kitten and Big D's primer on supernatural and local fol folklore, because I haven't seen that one either. And but that one's like forty five minutes. Huh? Yeah. Well, the one with Kevin, which I've seen that one. That one's like 40 minutes. But these are the only ones I, I haven't really seen. I suppose we'll do the one with the cop. I mean, it's like an hour, but that's not... That's not too bad. I'll still be done before midnight. So. Turn the game down a bit here. Yeah, this is an audio log. Um, I just, I don't want to, like, do a reaction to stuff I've already seen. That's disingenuous. If I've seen part of it, I'll tell y'all I saw part of it. Which, I've heard parts of this, but I haven't, I haven't seen all of it. Now! In case and this is Big D's guide to avoiding arrest. As you weren't paying attention, Miss Unclose. This is how it all happened. The newly fed Diopolis, known to you as Piotor, broke out of our cellar and hunted us for sport. Due to drinking two of his fellow vampires, he had gained immense... Piotor was a really good Nosferatu. I agree with Haller on that. ...more potent vitae and had gone from a 12th generation rube to a humongous, thick, sickoid monster of the 10th generation. Yeah. So stupendous he became, he managed to break through the cellar door we spent half of Marcus's weight in gold on. <laughs> that could take a force of 2,475 minar. Turning it down a little bit. ...125 in that kilograms measurement. And definitely not 18,000 in your American caveman measurements. <laughs> remember my <laughs> Crap. Next thing we know, he's somewhere in the house, invisible. And Marcus decides to jump out the window, which has him sprained both his legs. And then they're also. Yeah, that was dumb. Our plan was to hit. He was shot with a gun because Dora dropped a gun. <laughs> ...for the carport roof. But then I was dragged out the very same window Marcus had opened, and I landed on the stony barrow by the house. I was so exhausted by that, I decided to go to sleep. <laughs> I saw Marcus had not dragged me down the road following our secret safe passage. In turn, my son-in-law then expertly tries to lure the vampire out onto our front lawn. But he does not fall for it, and that lands Marcus in especially hot water. 
Unfortunately, that disgusting fucking dope brain did not use his full strength to kill my son. I think he wasn't trying to kill any one of us. So he'd line us up in a sick, vampiric, all-you-can-eat buffet. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Still, I suspect he may have followed a foolhardy urge to embrace us all and bury us in a mass grave. We may have all been damned this day, had it not been for what happened next. My son Dawes' ingenuity struck him in more ways than one, as our front yard had been converted with custom, sensitive, anti-freak minds for a situation much Oh, anti-freak minds. Well played shot by my beautiful, wonderful... I don't know that that is there, uh, that that's actually a type of mine. <laughs> the Nosferatu known as Piotr was swiftly knocked into torpor. This is an interesting synopsis of the first arc. I can't wait for the second one. Later today, I'm going to gather the leftovers of his conflagration. I'm planning on compressing it into a diamond to show that even the ugly of us can be made magnificent. Perhaps I'll attach it to a ring and give Marcus a spectacular wedding band. But, uh, yeah, before that, we will... Interesting. <laughs> I mean, he really didn't want the cops to be called at the end of that, so. All right. Good day, sir. My name is Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman. I'll be interviewing you today. Are you uh, feeling comfortable? Your jaw situation any better? No. Oh gosh. Yes, a bit. <laughs> you know. How about I make us some coffee? I'll be right back. You do that, detective. You best do that. If there's one thing we know for a fact as hunters, it's that the vampire is everywhere. Society is led blindly by the deeply ingrained wiles of these creatures, and especially that of their most guileful sect, the Camarilla. They infiltrate every facet of human life. Industry, government, all forms of organizing. Why does it seem like the moon is bouncing with his voice? Family. You can never be sure where they Maybe it is. Might be. And so you must always be primed to plug them. Let me set the scene. I sit inside the Norfolk Constabulary in the township of Wales next to the sea. I am just about to be interviewed. My goals are to see if the police here have been compromised by the Camarilla. Do not give anything away that could be seen by them as a masquerade breach, and, of course, not be arrested. Uh, this will be harder than you might expect, because I'm going in with a handicap. Right. Here you go. Kevin, was it? You can call me the great and mighty Kevin if you'd like. All my friends do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and uh, thank you. I do. <laughs> wow, great and mighty Kevin. That sounds fantastic. Where did you get that title? Oh, it's a long story. Uh, from my accounting days, it kind of stuck as an in joke, and it makes me feel pretty great and mighty in the day to day. Uh, you don't have to use it. It's just a funny little joke. <laughs> Well, I always respect titles, ye great and mighty one. <laughs> you better believe I'll be using it. Well, thank you, Detective Sergeant. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to have a time of it today, I'm sure. But, 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 I must inform you that we're recording this. Camera's up in the corner there. There's also these microphones picking up our voices. So, if you want to speak to us... I'm an ASMR enjoying weirdo, and this cop would actually... Probably do really well in ASMR, whoever's voicing him. I'd ask you to speak loudly and clearly so the microphones can pick you up the best they can. Whoever voices Rogel Dorn would also do quite well. All right. That should not be an issue. Very good, very good, thank you. Or a door in this the camera and one. The microphone are not working. In preparation for the inevitability of an arrest, I make it a habit of sneaking huh? into local constabularies around Warham. Oh my gosh, yes. Equipment. The constabulary is incredibly oh, small, man. with only a scan. It would be funny. Working there at any given time. ASMR. <laughs> yes. Okay. has no wit. Breaking into a small police station is about the easiest thing you can do. 
I'm all for trolling. <laughs> he said Typhus would be best, and when I agreed, I think it kind of surprised him, but I think it would be funny as a troll. <laughs> I'm about to die, y'all. <coughs> <coughs> What'd you say? Typhus canonically has Gilbert Godfrey's voice, and you cannot change my mind. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, sorry about that. That's no trick. So, it's just the two of us, otherwise. Right now, it's 14.34 p.m. If you look at the watch, could you confirm? Oh, oh, yeah. 14.34. It is indeed the number on your timepiece. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yep, very good. So, today is the 1st of December, 2006, at Norfolk Constabulary in Wells next to the city. I'm so curious to see where this goes. Like I said, I've heard bits and pieces of it, but... I love Wales next to sea. I might go ride the military steam train later while I'm here. That would be a good adventure. Oh, is that right? A big adventure on the world's smallest public railway. How could I pass it up? Oh, oh yeah, true. <laughs> I rode on it with the kids last summer. They adored it. It passes through some drop dead gorgeous vistas. You really get to see Norfolk from another angle, you know? Oh, for sure. Did you know there's a ghost platform along the track? He's doing a lot of, uh, oh, derailing. Abandoned one. Yeah, yeah. There's also that Iron Hawk can. Hmm, that one's in Warham, right? Actually, that camp's pretty close to where you were today, isn't it? Oh, yes, the camp is quite close to my dear friend's home. Uh, we don't go there much. It's quite the dreary spot. Smooth as death. Uh, the Iron Age Fort, that is. Dead. A corpse was found there a few years ago. Some poor sod who had been missing since the 90s. Like he'd been lying there for a while and no one picked up on it. Goodness. That would be weird. Was it any one of you who found it? No, it was my friend's neighbor, Krakos. He found it while he was doing his daily routine of digging ditches into places that do not <laughs> Let's... I had heard that part before, but that is still... <laughs> Digging places and uh, ditches into places that do not need ditches. Very interesting. But perhaps we should get on with the actual interview. What do you say? Oh, sorry, sorry. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to waste any more of your time than No, this. no, no, no. It's all right. You're all right, Kevin. That's totally fine. I'll just need to go through some more formalities with you before we can begin. A formal lad. I love it. Oh, not for long. It's pub time after this. <laughs> <laughs> I love drinking! <laughs> so this would be good, actually. I don't know if you know this, but the police in these lands are quite unlike what you see in the mainstream stories of the modern age. They seek to build a different rapport following the peace method of interrogation. With this, they primarily wish to disarm their suspect by making them as agreeable and comfortable as they can be. This? Okay. The comfort after a stressful situation are far more likely to tell the truth. I watch a lot of police interrogations, and this is true. They very rarely come in swinging. They're usually trying to be your friend. Knowing this, I intentionally... It's true. ...casual and comfortable role exactly where the officer wants me. So they will be more likely to believe I'm being honest. This is an advanced deception technique I invented. A technique I refer to as lying. <laughs> lying. So, Good. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand what I've just said? Clear as crystal. Could you put it in your own words? I shouldn't say anything weird. <laughs> well, you've already failed that part. <laughs> I my cover was blown. And after I, I prepared my hidden poison blade. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, what, a, what a relief. 
All right, so that's your right to silence. Just need to have that put out. So, could I ask for your full name for the purpose of the interview? My name is Kevin Wetsworth. Do you have a middle name? Malcolm. Like Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone makes that joke, I can assure you. I'm not as wild and wacky as Malcolm. In I can imagine if they're a normal man. <laughs> I could absolutely imagine if there was a kid when that show was on and fairly popular that if their middle name was Malcolm, they would have gotten that joke. And they probably hated it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to slap a dead horse. My name's Guy, so well, I understand it when people are jokers about your name. Oh, that's completely understandable, my guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you sure you are that's pretty funny. Wacky as you are on TV. Well, Maybe a tad, maybe, maybe just a little. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, film, all right, well. Television. Could I get your birthday as well, Malcolm? Oh, sorry. Kevin? Oh, that's all right. The worms will get us all one day. The what? It's October 31st. <laughs> that is a weird thing to say. Oh, that's pretty fun. That's All Hallows Eve. Yes, it's also National Magic Day. The day Houdini died. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I wonder if that's actually true. So, a few more questions. First off, what's your address? You can go through it all. The officer went through a few more questions. If he said the 29th, he did not. He died on the 31st. The actual interview began. So. And I'm, I don't remember what the date he said was. Your reckoning. Oh, do you want me to go through the entire morning? Anything yeah. you think might be relevant. All right. So I've been up all night. I haven't got any sleep yet. And that will make something of a night owl. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was meeting up with some old friends. We haven't met in a good while. Years and years as I've been out traveling. So I was driven to the house a few days prior. Uh, we had a good time. And then... Well... How is he going to spin this? It's all right. Take your time. How is he going to spin it? This is where it all begins. There are already several missing persons reports in and around the area of the tunnel entrance. Since that is where I first found them, and since Sabat members are usually reported as missing people themselves, I wanted to use this to my advantage. However, I already know the tunnels are a particular target of Camarilla interest. And also, that the Anarchs have declared the area under their domain. Assuming the police are compromised, any mention of the tunnels will lead to suspicion. But I might be able to use it to throw off the scent. So, it was early in the morning a few days ago. Uh, we took a fun little nightly road trip to an area just between Walsingham, Binham and Hindringham. Uh, right along Wells Road. We went there because, well... <laughs> I'm kind of big into cold cases, and uh, I know there's been some missing persons reports in that particular area, so we just kind of went there. I know it's irresponsible, it's all right. uh, but it was just such an enticing it's prospect. all right. I absolutely understand. You were just out for some excitement. You're not the only ones, let me tell you. Well, I'll be honest. I mean, does. cold case weirdos out there like me do exist. Worse. I kind of... I know, a lot of people are into it. Yes? Well... I try to entice the officer into presenting me with a leading question. If he is a Camarilla agent, he will know about the tunnel situation to some degree. What degree, I'm not sure. But he will want to take any possible masquerade breach into account. If he takes the bait, I will be made more certain. Take your Interesting. Time. I can understand if it's hard to talk. <clears throat> Take it on. <laughs> That's very exaggerated. <laughs> I'm not sure how you're feeling. If you feel self-conscious about it, that's fine. 
We all make mistakes. Mm. Is he biting? Yes. It was a... Well, yeah, quite a gap on our part, I'd say. And now, just a little more. It was all related to the missing persons report, I take it. Almost. I think so. You think so? Did you find anyone, or...? Found anyone? <laughs> what does he mean? Does he imply that he thinks the missing people might just be lost? Or is he implying we might have found someone else there? He thinks the former, I might be safe. If not, hmm, how will he respond? Well, yes, we did. I do kind of like his, like this insight into his brain, like his thinking. And that was the same people who you invited home a few days ago. Whoa, what the fuck? What kind of question is that? That we invited home? That is far too specific to be a coincidence. And that's when I realized my sons, my son-in-law, my grandson, they were all interviewed before me. Which, of course, was the intention, but... They were fucking up on their testimonies! I cannot believe it. After everything I've taught them, invited home? Why would he say that? Who said that? Oh! Wait. Of it does him. Son-in-law? It must have been my son-in-law who said that. Oh, his anti-cop training was never concluded. He never got past the Grand Theft Police Car Seminar. <laughs> oh my gosh. He wanted to present this as having been a good-natured affair on our part. The fool. Fool. I must be incredibly careful. But I need to harmonize these different testimonies. Yes, we took pity on them. Pity, you say? Of course. They, I'm sorry, the missing people. We, uh, what shall I say? I recognize some of them. Or at least one of them from the missing persons posters. Noted. Just a moment before we continue. I braced myself for combat. Hey. Right. Teams to come pouring in for fists and bullets to fly. But instead, I was faced with a more powerful and lethal foe. Yeah. <laughs> Paperwork. This is an index of many missing persons in the local area. Could you flip through? Tell us if you recognize any of these. It's very ready to fight. My suspicions bright and aroused like an ornery male. <laughs> oh gosh. I flipped through the names. Most were passingly familiar to me. Ready Hunter with their salt. This preparation is even more important than firepower. However, these ones, I'd expect, were just victims of the Sabbat. No faces I recalled seeing elsewhere. I struggled with myself. Should I mention a name at random? No. I'm foolish. It could be a trap to yep. invalidate my testimony. <laughs> to boot, I didn't recognize all of them. Were some of the others vampires? I struggled. I struggled and struggled. Till by pure chance... You found someone? I came across a familiarly unfamiliar face. Fyodor. Yes. Let me take a gander. Oh. Actually, it's Peter. Peter Piotrowski. His face was warped. Handsome beyond recognition. Poor fellow. Is that a flight suit? Such a prick. Is that a fight suit? Or is he about to get into a mech or something? Was he there that night? Yes. Though he had a bandana on for the most part. I recognize the hair, the eyes, the name. Yes. Yes, he was there that night. And with no body to disprove my story, that should be alibi enough for any Camarilla constabularies. 
Interesting. Does he believe him? So you found this man, Peter Piotrowski, and who obviously you do not recognize. Would that be accurate? Yes. They had formed into a group and approached us in the thicket. They said they just managed to escape some strange captors that us for help. They didn't go into much detail, but how could we refuse? Little did we know. They were on a quiet little scene. Hmm. That sounds pretty incredible. Huh. I mean... That's because it is incredible. You contradicted the family story. And how many were there? Four. Right. Okay, so just to get this straight, you found four people lost in the woods. You thought you recognized them, or at least one of them, from missing persons reports, and you brought them back to your place. Is that all correct so far? Is he going to ask why he didn't call the cops? Report, Detective Sergeant, uh, perhaps you should consider a career in court stenography. <laughs> Maybe when my legs give in, I'll consider it. Uh, <laughs> smash them in with a pipe wrench if you can. <laughs> like that escalated quickly. <laughs> Fuck. What are the testimonies of the family given? All right. So let me have a think about this because I have a couple of questions. Um... Damnation! Son-in-law's report was in all likelihood the most divergent one. The rest, without doubt, told him that bringing them back was an involuntary affair. Mm, he is too nice. He agreed with his testimony like this. It isn't going to be enough. Perhaps I'm going too wild with this story. The lack of collaboration could undo me here. It's three against two. There is a clear divergence that cannot be reconciled. Unless... All right, so first off, what happened on the way back to the house? I am curious about the other's oh, testimony. Wait, there is an out here. Marcus! Marcus, I put my fate in you, son! Into your hands I commit my spirit! I didn't interact with him much, but I know there were a few ill towards two of us from the beginning. Uh, the father, Dor, and his son, if you know him. Yep, sure. I didn't catch on to it very early, but I think those thugs... Why is his name Dor? ...from the onset. He, Dor, was the one driving, you see. Uh, the rest of us didn't really think about it, or as far as I know, at least. Them drive like it was the wacky races, off the road, into the bushes and everything. It was crazy. With this, we can harmonize the accounts. As long as Marcus did this correctly. Hmm. All right. So, what happened when you got home? Yes! He bought it! Marcus I mean, I'm curious how he knows born. that. He knows how does he know he, he bought it? You and of course he knows his fiance. Marcus has reconciled this very testimony in much the same way as his father. I'm not the only one in this. We will harmonize these accounts together. Sorry, uh, when we got home? Yes. That's when it all went to hell, of course. This is the harder part. There are many specifics in this part of the story. I realized I was traipsing into a minefield, much like the one in our front lawn. <laughs> I needed to be specific, but not specific enough to contradict the others' testimonies. The Marcus thing minefield in the front yard, man. No doubt he'd gone for an approach not dissimilar to my own. Thor, on the other hand, he's precise, calculated, with the creativity of a sea cucumber. If anyone gave exact information, it would be him. My darling son-in-law has no doubt continued to be his typical, friendly, and accommodating self, for better or worse. And boy... I wonder if he's going to get away with this. Is he going to get away with it? Boy, I love my grandson. I'm sorry? Humana, humana, Brian Cranston. Oh, oh, yes, Malcolm in the middle. Sorry, let's s stay on topic, though. You invited the missing people into your house. I don't understand. My presumption to raid, I focused on one thing. 
If this officer was with the Camarilla, he would already know the survivors were vampires. If that were the case, he'd be looking for the slightest hint that we were aware of that, which would essentially mark us for death. Sorry, things went very fast. At first we were socializing. They had come in from the cold. I was worried sick about them. It seemed like they had the most incredible story. And eventually that story proved too good to be true. They had guns. And they infected us. What kind of guns? I'm not much of a hunter. I couldn't say the exact kind. I'll clear lie, by the way. I am actually the best hunter. <laughs> anyway. Of course he would think that. Of course he would think that. It could have been a rifle. I also think I saw some biscuits. Let's see, let's see. And was there anything else? My God, yes. They owed us a gunpoint, handed us mines, explosives, and forced us to plant them in our front lawn. To me, bringing the mind here into things was a no-brainer. If anyone mentioned anything, it'd be that. I just had to bring the narrative around in a way that reflected blame. And where were these explosives found? On the property? On the property? What do you mean? Well, look. I need you to be honest. You know? I need the clearest account possible. And I need to know, where were the explosives from? Were they owned by your friends? No, no! Good heavens, no! How could you even say that? Kevin, listen. My family, my good friends, for a life family, that is, and, and I, get fucking held at gunpoint, punched, kicked, forced into traumatizing labor, including my friend's very small son, who I call my grandson, even though I'm 47 years old. You ask if the mines were ours? My apologies, Kevin. I understand your experience was traumatic. You're right. I mean, I can understand. <laughs> I can understand if he wasn't lying, being outraged. But we know he's lying. As manic as those fuckers. Sorry? The fuckers. Fuckers. Hell's fuckers. <laughs> you heard of them? Oh, oh, of course. This was the beginning of my counterattack. As you're no doubt aware, our dearest Bruja anti tribu Shitbeard, was a member of the Fuckers from Hell, also known as the Tales. <laughs> okay. His jacket frame was used, and that sort of matters. That county spanning biker brigade is a known Sabbat affiliate. They have a penchant for embracing bikers, truckers, and other hard men of the road. They also are known for their violent encounters with Anarch, Camarilla, and law enforcement alike. Were they involved in- Man, this really makes people want to play vampire. <laughs> One of them made mention of that. They said to me, Listen up, you goddamn swat shrew! Dig the ditch, and if you're lucky, hell's fuckers won't put you in it! In that same accent? That's right, an American accent. Brrrrs and all. <laughs> and you say the mines weren't yours, but theirs? Yes, of course, of course! I refuse to believe even Dor would have admitted to us owning the mines. Not even son in law is that accommodating. Not even boy is that naive. I am doubling down on this. I see. So, just to clear this up, this is all just some um, coincidence. The missing persons you brought home were affiliated with the Hell's Fuckers gang, and they happened to ride home with a former EOD specialist, bringing their own minds. <laughs> Damn you! Prepare to die! I wanted to scream that as loud as I could when he said that his story was beginning to crumble. Dor gave me a dress to his EOD suit. He must have admitted to Where would the sword be? told him of his old fucking mining days, god damn it! Because what you're telling me is that these people showed up, including at least one missing person, and then, with mines they supplied themselves, they had you, and especially your friend, a professional in the, uh, 
field. They had him dig up a minefield in your own front lawn. Could you confirm that as correct in your assessment? Well, uh, a liar would get indignant. If I were telling the truth, I'd get angry. Look here, stakehead! <laughs> sure what the truth is. Uh, I understand that. I'm sure but... it sounds ridiculous to you, but so did walruses until we had photos of them. For fuck's sake, man. Tusks on a manatee? Oh, I, <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> I hope you are. Because if you don't believe me, I'll invoke my right to attorney. Which you're free to do. However, However, nothing. The facts are clear. They had a whole stash of weapons nearby. A fucking stash. Was it just mines? Once they found out about Dor's background, they decided to store their arms there. It wasn't a coincidence. It was some kind of sick, spontaneous whimsy on their part. I waited for the response. A sharp repudiation. A resignation that a lawyer was necessary. Or even becoming officially arrested. And yet... Oh. Oh. I see. That's rather disconcerting. In write that up. You seemed to accept it. I feel like it would be <laughs> if it was true. Could he have accepted any story, no matter how ridiculous? No. I could see it in his eyes. His hands sweaty, clammy, his eyes glazing over in a sense of internal calculation. He wasn't just entertaining me. He was genuinely concerned, which could only mean one thing. I'll make sure that gets the relevant authorities. This wasn't any normal cop. He was certainly a Camarilla agent. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, okay, I have to wonder. I have to wonder, and I, I'm sure... Well, maybe we'll find out by the end of this. I don't know. I want to know if he is a Camarilla agent. I can already hear the gears turning. Does he think this is a new stage in the Sabbat Crusade? Perhaps he's thinking we're a ghoul. If the Sabbat Armory had moved in so close, he'd need to alert his masters. <sighs> All right. Apologies for my tempo flaring. <clears throat> what? Oh, uh, it's uh, quite all right. Tense situation. Weird situation. It really is weird. Why commandeer a random house? I guess it's like they say. You never expect the level of criminality that goes entirely unaccounted for outside of cities. But uh, it's fine. Oh, well, not really, but... Was there anything else? Did you happen to overhear anything? Oh, oh, yes, 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 there is something. That man, the one with the drawl. The American? Yes, him. I heard him mention there was a dispute with some rival gang. Like a, an, an anarchist gang? That should hit the spot. Uh, hmm. Did they say anything about that gang? They would most likely be luring them to our house. Hence, you know, the minefield. And we just did it, of course, hoping we'd be spared. But then, just before dawn, more bikers showed up and they just drove off with them. After that, the alarm finally went off and called the police. But, uh, I don't know. Perhaps they were expecting that. Don't worry about that, sir. We'll take it from here. Thank goodness. That's a load off my shoulders. I'm sure. Now, he is not even done with them yet, I'm sure. a few more questions, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. I love talking to cops. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not. <laughs> Right, so, we wanted to ask about the car in the carport. The car? Yes. Do you know what happened to it? Uh, I do not. Okay, that's fine. Do you know anything about the pit in front of the car at the carport? What? Pit? Who's been digging pit? <laughs> must have been Piotr's doing somehow. Or was Krakus skulking around the property again? <laughs> Digging ditches where they do not belong. <laughs> to the car. I've not seen or heard anything. 
Well, it looks like it had somehow been driven into the carpool entrance, the one into the house, that is. But it's flipped horizontally with the uh, car door leading into the house, if you can visualize it. What the fuck? Uh, yeah. It almost looks like it's been thrown or something. That would be weird to see, I imagine. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I beat him to it. Pit, which is exactly outside the car. Do you know if any of you dug that? Um... The fuck is this now? Like it's been thrown or something? You seem pure to all through my son-in-law's runabout. That would be a given to anyone even vaguely familiar with yep. the vampire society. It would be. Why would he tell me it looked like it was thrown? Is he being coy? Does he already know I'm in the know? Or did someone else say it? It can't be that one of the others actually said that it was thrown, or that it looks like it was thrown. How could they? Is he checking for masquerade breaches? Or does he just say it like that because he genuinely thinks it looked like it was thrown? Is he genuinely looking for answers? Why would he say it like that if he was? Why would he say it like that if he wasn't? That would be a dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Camarilla, after all. Oh, what the fuck? I'm second guessing myself. I'm not sure if any one of us dug that pit. Uh, I honestly have no clue. This could have happened whilst I was burying mines, or it could have happened when I was uh, unconscious. Could you tell me a bit about how that happened? This should be easier. There cannot be many contradictions in our testimonies. And after this, I'm out. It's up to everyone else past this point. I can count on Marcus saying that he didn't jump out the window. And the other three certainly would know this. Sure. So... Hmm. The red-headed one, Marcus. He was let go out the window from the second floor. When he landed, he sprained both his legs. Absolutely horrid. I hate gravity. Oh, and then they shot his legs with a gun, because that was only a natural part of their M.O. as fuckers. That's awful. Yes. Uh, then, of course, I was next. I was let go, and I fell onto the rocky barrow next to our house, and that's how I got this brand new Campbell jawline. Cool, I love Evil Dead. <laughs> Ev he evil Dead is good. The Evil Dead is a good, uh, <laughs> good couple of movies. Army of Darkness 2. Loves the evil dead. I didn't get too much into the show. <laughs> yeah, you know, I absolutely agree. But, sorry, I didn't mean to derail the conversation. <laughs> the fuck was that face? Marcus was shot in the legs. How were you dragged out the window? Did anyone in particular drag you? Yeah, well, he, uh, wait. Dragged? Who said dragged? I did not say I was dragged out. Sorry, uh, um, uh, fuck. By dragged out? Does he mean dragged to the window and thrown out? Or does he mean grabbed by a hand and dragged outside? Oh god, this is too specific to be a coincidence. Who? I mean, I was dragged out the window. Door would be more simple in this approach. Marcus would not. He was there. He was grabbed by the head and pulled out the window. Be that specific. Your own son-in-law knows not to mention something like that. Boy. Boy. No! Boy chose the wrong word! Yeah, so it was one of the bikers. I'm not sure which. I just kind of fell out and landed down on a stone, so... Absolutely. But how did you exit the window? Oh, what the fuck is this? This is some serious probing. What should I say? If I even approach the truth, that would sound ridiculous enough to be seen as a serious indictment towards my legitimacy. He's not wrong. It could be seen as a masquerade breach. Boy's innocent blunder might be enough to warrant our destruction. Damn my beautiful, sweet, and precious, perfect grandchild! Damn him! <laughs> oh, right. So, this was quite the horrifying moment, I'm going to lie. But very fast, but... As Marcus was thrown out the window, he actually grabbed onto me midair, and wait, he's a big lad, and so uh, I tried to stop his fall, gripping at the windowsill. But when the rest of those 
thugs lifted my legs and pushed me out. Uh, we both fell and I smashed my jaw in. Oh, what? What? I don't know. So, just to clear this up, you were upstairs at this stage. Marcus was thrown out the window by the thugs. And then you, approaching the window and standing by it, was grabbed by Marcus. You were dragged out by him and fell down too, with the thugs helping by destabilizing you. Could you confirm? Shit. Did anyone else forget the time between Marcus falling and me falling? That would be a really good question. It took a few minutes before I too was thrown out. If anyone has, it's a contradiction clear as day. Damn it. Fuck. I cannot correct this. Could you? Yes, that is correct. All right. And just to clarify, how many of the thugs helped force you out the window? I don't know. And do you know what happened immediately after that at all? I do not. Okay. Let me write this up real quick. I mean, he was unconscious, so... Why? Why isn't he bringing up the time? He could have nailed me right there. If he asked how much time it took between us falling, anything of the sort, a clear contradiction would immediately become apparent. That's what he wants, isn't it? Unless... <laughs> Marcus! 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 He said the same exact thing I did! He covered it up just This is great, honestly. He strengthened our testimony yet again! He reinforced... It's a little hard to react, um, to really react episodes like this, but this is good. I'm loving it. Alloys as strong as his massive shoulders, <laughs> flowing radiant hair. Oh, I love that boy. You seem like you're in a good mood. What? Oh, no. <laughs> Something on your mind, girl? Oh, no. I was just thinking of how thankful I am that everyone survived. You know, after I was knocked out, the last thought I had was of inextricable horror. But also a pure, unflinching trust. It was like a force. I knew the others would make it. I knew they would get us out of that mess, even without me. And, and they did. Wow. I'm sure you help in your own little way. So, could you tell me what happened in the cellar? <laughs> Fuck. He had to have known they were going to find that. I dearly hope they wouldn't have. What do I do here? This is the most damning part yet. What have we ever said here? There are two corpses down there. It's covered in blood. There are cameras and cages. It looks like a literal murder dungeon. It does. It's what true. Does, at very least, That's really what it was, though. Austerity. But I... The cellar? I wasn't aware they went down there. Okay. So, you didn't see or hear anything from down there? I don't think so, no. You didn't watch the live feed on the computer? <laughs> live feed? You mean with the camera they have down there? So you know there is a camera down there? Yes. That cop's face there. Marcus is in there. Yes. Fun dungeon. <laughs> elaborate? Do I have to? I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a reason why we need you to elaborate on this. Look, this is too much for me. It is fucked up sex cellar, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know about it. I know about it, and I hate it. It makes me want to vomit and die. It's this thing he and his partner got started up, and, you know, that's their prerogative. I, I support their relationship totally, but the things I've seen down there. What kind of things? Rodeo cowboys. What? <laughs> Rodeo cowboys. I Small plastic army men! By God! If those thugs found it, I can't believe what their reaction was. Okay. 
Sorry, uh, writing that, uh, down. <laughs> Could you explain what else exactly is down there? Um, well, some specialty about cages, a sign that says something about not screaming. I think there's a horse whip serving double duty sometimes, but most of his stash is up in my room. You know, his figures. <laughs> <laughs> was simply knowing too much like how much he spent on those miniatures goodness he should steal them next time <laughs> miniatures are expensive I know if the cages were used for anything else not as far as i know no right do you know two persons via the name of richard porter and Dave McGlow. I do not. Oh, hold on. Richard Porter and Dave McGlow. These must be the That's names. That long John out. Boy. No. Their real identities. But so soon, missing people for certain. Here's my chance. Do they find Kevin though? Actually. I think I do. Or one of them, at least. And what's your relation to them? Didn't that Dave McClough guy disappear a few months ago? I think I read about it in a missing persons report. Uh, why? Are, are they connected to the case? They were found in the cellar. What? Really? Were they part of the gang? Are they arrested? We found them dead. What? What? Like... They were killed? How? We're still looking into it. But it looks like they died a time ago. More than I mean, years ago in the case of Richard Porter. They would. <laughs> Lowe was badly mutilated. He was hard to ID. What? They just put the corpses of some dead people down there? We do not know the situation. I... I think I made it. Shakir had the Hell's Fuckers logo emblazoned on his jacket. But they found the corpses, and they found the jacket. That's true. I take that as a coincidence. That corpse has not been lying there for five plus years, and the clothes he's wrapped up in are probably fresher than the corpse itself. When a vampire faces final death, their body rapidly degenerates to the state their corpse would have been at had they died the day of their embrace. To someone naive. That's Shakir interesting. Been dead for a long, wonder if long that's true. Time. But his clothes. I haven't played vampire in a long time. That might be accurate. It probably is. I mean, honestly. These uh these guys do pretty darn accurate. Pretty darn accurate work. They're brand new in comparison. In addition, the blood. It could still be fresh. This will look like a setup. Why would we dig down mines in our own front lawn to illegal firearms and dress up corpses in our cellar? No matter how you cut it, there was a struggle in our home and it looks the part. They found us badly hurt, abused. We were far beyond innocent in the world of McMurtle and Beefy Camarilla. <laughs> Why, you'd already know what these corpses were. It would look exactly like it was, even fighting between support members. Yep. We should be in the club. That is true. <laughs> All righty. So... I have a few more questions, then we will conclude for today. You good with that? We did it! Certainly. Do you know how the mines were detonated? I do not. Right. <laughs> he was unconscious. Where the thugs disappeared? I truly have no clue. Right. Could you describe the character of each of the thugs? You can start off with whichever one you like. Oh, sure. Well, I remember one being quite skinny, black or striped. We continued on with the interview for a brief moment longer, but it wasn't long until I had made it unscathed to the rest of the questions. And then there was this fucking weirdo with a wizard hat. I didn't mean to wear the wizard hat. <laughs> right, so. In conclusion, let me just clarify your story. 
you picked up a group of individuals in seeming duress. They turned out to be individuals with violent intent that forced the family to conduct dangerous activities such as burying mines under the threat of death. Which, which to be fair, burying mines could, like, kill you anyway. <laughs> like, it could. It could kill you anyway. ...were assaulted in the process, and the individuals are still on free foot. You were not aware of the situation with the corpses, the car, the pit, nor the time of the mines detonating or the departure of the suspects. Would you confirm this as a fair summation? Yes. Very good. So, this interview is now concluded at the time of... 15.40 on the 1st of December, 2006. If you look, can you confirm that for the recording? If the clock speaks true, then so it is! Please just say yes or no. <laughs> yes. Uh, very good. Thank you very much for your time. You're now free to go. Thank you very much, Detective. Sorry, what was that? Detective? <laughs> I have had a time of it, just as you said. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Gov. Glad to hear it. And I pray that jaw of yours heals up right quick. Oh, I'm sure it will. Could have gone much worse, that. Must have been your guardian angel or something. Well, if you believe in that kind of thing. Uh, I'm a bit of a skeptic, personally. Oh, really? Yes. I definitely don't believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> what the heck? Ghosts and supernatural stuff and all that, but I don't know. How would that stuff even work? I feel like science would have caught on to there being just this whole other spectrum of matter and energy just kind of floating around old forests and manors by now. <laughs> Finger bonger. Right. Yeah, or in tunnels or whatever. Uh, you know. Tunnels? Oh, shit. Well, look at the time. It's off to the pub. No fucking way. I've got to go myself. It's the weekend, sir. No one has told him of the tunnels. I know no one has told him of the tunnels, right? Does your great and mighty one need escorting out? He is an agent. There's no that was kind of a weird slip there. Them all along. He screwed up. Won't be necessary. Oh, that's good. Ah, oh, such a scatterbrain. I've got one final question, actually, but quite unrelated. Uh, go right ahead. Do you know a Caitlin Wetsworth? Yes, M my mother. Your sister. Fuck! She's reported you as missing multiple times but you've been reported as accounted for now eh? you even said that you were out traveling weren't you but she's kept up with the reports maybe you should look into that Damnation! but you know you sent for like that so close to the yep. end i i made a mistake no big d doesn't make mistakes <laughs> big d oh my gosh not by some low-down country detective. Not by all the vampires in the world. <laughs> oh, detective. Uh, yeah? It's been a while, hasn't it? Since last you had me. Hmm. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Have no fear, detective. You have. Past? You followed the false tradition of your father. The regent of Grey Manor congratulated you. Come to the house for the night and say, You are accepted. Well, uh, uh, oh, and don't be so What the heck? to mention this to the others. It simply won't do. But, but, w what should my report say? You'll put nothing out of the ordinary. Ensure this is buried as quickly and quietly as Interesting. I will show it to you. Excellent work. Y yes, Master. Thank you, Master. Interesting. I stuff it out in the most immodest way I possibly could. To share I believe that. I was watered for that poor little detective. And so our police adventure had come to a close. And we were not indicted. Neither by the law, nor by the Camarilla. So he was. was a <laughs> it's Kevin. <laughs> Which I have not built since I last rode an actual roller coaster.
Yeah. You speak words, and the words are truth, Kevin. He should have murked that guy, though. <laughs> Rubbed out. Made past tense. How forward. <laughs> you should have killed him. Now that, obviously, I had considered. But you <laughs> You ice one corrupt police chief. All of a sudden, oh, you have to leave the country now. Oh. Which country did this happen? That's not the point, I'm Bangladesh. <laughs> Bangladesh, I was going to say. Oh, I just needed an unused identity in the area. I already had your license, so I felt it right. That makes zero sense. Well, it's also so I can help you sell your apartment. I'm you now. Really? You would do it? <laughs> oh my gosh. What do I do, Smurples? Well... Smurples. Smurples is going to be my next cat name. <laughs> wanted a familiar resort. An excellent reward for capping Piotr. Oh! Has he taken care of a pet before? He has, but he's a clever lad. I'm sure he'll manage. I'll write a list of his every want and need. You will not have to think about anything. Will everyone else be nice to him, though? I don't want to leave him in the hands of a lone child with gun interests. <laughs> uh, I mean... Be frank, Kevin, I, I do not like cats. That confirms it. You are a demon, just as I think. But, just for you, I will be injecting toxoplasmosis into my brainstem later today to ensure I do not kick him into a chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It'll take days to rinse up. A follow-up question, though. That's excessive. My name in this manner incredibly fucking irrational. Won't it give up your cover? <laughs> oh, Kevin. You might be able to fool your pack mates, but me? You weren't known as Kevin nor Kevin Wetsworth when you were with the Camarilla, were you? Oh no. <laughs> Would you know this? I know more of your old master than you know yourself. I know that after death, you were stripped of your old name, burned away, and given a new one. An alias defined by the regent herself. I want to know what it is. Dwindled existence. As far as the Camarilla is concerned, you have no name past the one they gave you. Kevin Wentworth was dead enough. But that corpse you never buried. You did not fully let go of your old name, as you know. You readopted it as soon as you gained standing within the subplot. Isn't that right? No! I am not telling you my shitty Camarilla! <laughs> no, it is integral to our survival! No. Well, you can either tell me that, or you can tell me what your hell's fuckers packmates called you before you gained enough respect to be called Kevin. You had a name like Ape Boy or Shitbeard too, didn't you? You present me with a two-pronged road. Oh, no. One leads to hell, and the other also leads to hell. Choose wisely. But meaty fool that you are, you do not realize that I can simply walk off the fucking road. No, give me names. It's Herbertus, in it. Where'd he come from? Now, by the way, also Herbertus. <laughs> Herbertus. How do you know it? And what the fuck are you doing here? And who are you? <laughs> I was invited here. I'm Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman. I'm also a ghoul of the Lady Regent. I know you from the Chantry. Or, well, haven't seen you in a few Maybe? I just know you were the Chantry stockbroker or something. Uh, yep. I curse you! I curse you with balls fall off disease! I give you lupus! Wow! <laughs> you just have a wasting disease! No, now. Kevin! Do not oh, no. man! He is here for his new assignment. Yeah, so as I said, I'm a ghoul. I'm one of the two regulars at the constabulary in Wells Texas Sea, but it's a bit far to Great Yarmouth, and the bond between me and the Regent hasn't been renewed in, like, eight months? I'm honestly not too picky anymore. I just want it renewed. Never trust a traitor! Not even when you create! Except for me, trust me, you know- <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. I want your blood. 
What? What? You want to be blood bonded by me? Herbie. Herbie, I'm dying. Herbie, I've been experiencing painful withdrawals for a long time now. And I know it's interesting. So it should fix me up just fine. No! No, I get shippy, not vice versa. And you, fool! You are so lost in your sauce, you don't know what you do! Nonsense. I love being bloodbound. That is the point! <laughs> this is a wicked and vile thing you ask. It's nothing of the sort. You say this, ignorant of the horrors of the blood bond. I have killed many in the Sabbat, but this is one line I shall not cross. Herbie. That's so weird. I don't care what silly name you use, I will never ghoul you. <sighs> Herbie, I have killed six men in service to the region. Two of them with my teeth. I recently injected contraband heroin into my system just to simulate withdrawal of vampire blood. Oh, wow. It didn't even compare. You being freaky will not convince me. Oh, I, I don't think you understand. I'm, I am a freak. I will kill again. And I will literally blow up the constabulary for even the smallest possible part of my take. If you don't give me what I want, I might just try to take it. And if I try to take it, you'll both probably kill me. So you'll have my blood on your hands. And quite frankly, I'm so desperate for a fix, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> Damn. Uh, why? That's so harsh. Why would you want to do anything of the sort when you're so close to being able to just sever it? Because I'm a hopeless addict and I like being a ghoul. It's a nice deal. I can lift my kids above my shoulders no matter how old they get. I'm going to still be doing it when they're 30, is my goal. I just need to get a better master. That's all. You have kids? That is fucking terrible. Let me spell it. Oh my gosh. Blood bonds are slavery. Slavery. In this case, it's more like indentured servitude. Okay, wow. How marginally better. <laughs> well, I'm a former public servant, so I guess I'm just used to it. Kevin, this man is offering his services to us. His loyalty lies with the highest bidder. But you are a far better source of detail than that hateful regent. It's... It's immoral. What? You're in the suburb. <laughs> I have. I mean, he's not wrong. He was. What the heck? This is. It's interesting to see. Lines I do not cross that I drew with my own free will, you fucking river troll. If you <laughs> to to they have some great insults. Reform the print of our activities, and we will all be blood hunted. Or he could get over his own sick addiction. <laughs> over your dead body. <laughs> what a you are. If we ghoul him, which we are doing consensually, I might add, we could easily. I don't care. It's gross. It's not that bad once you do it a couple of times. Besides, you drink blood too, don't you? You get. It. I only drink blood because I have to. You inject blood like it's crack. You <laughs> I mean. <laughs> With a detective on our side, Oh gosh. Do you know how valuable that is? With his help, we could creep closer to the machinations of the Camarilla than we ever could otherwise. I also make some mean jellied eels. We must have him! Ew. With his help, we could further our goals. In your new redemptionist cause, you could use this to set free the worthy of your kind before the new moon comes. Wow. Are you guys like a cult or something? Probably. We are in two. <laughs> Probably. Wow, neat. Come now, Kevin. I won't force you. I know it's a difficult decision. Just hand me the nicest knife you have, and I will stab my wrist open. Fantastic. Uh, let's use this. Uh, uh, no, this is a bit. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, oh, enchanted death magic. Uh, oh, I have <laughs> oh my gosh. cutlery lying around here somewhere. None of that I sin any shit. I've seen enough Boudicca role play to last for a lifetime at the Regent's Chantry. D did you know she loves talking about how unshaven her vagina is? Oh, gosh. Oh, 
You're lucky I have not this Corellia flying around, or you'd be shit out of it. Fine. Give. Thank you. Oh, also, I forgot. Um, your pack is dead. I, I told you that, right? Dead? Yeah. How are you feeling about that? The Vincolum is making me want to stab you 40 times, but it also feels like I've dumped my way out of a psycho polycule. So I'm feeling like hitting the town and injecting some crack. Very sexy. <laughs> Bastards. But I like those bastards. Almost as much as I hated those bastards. Would you There's some like friends you know, that are really like, like that. Well it all, in fact. Makes me almost glad to see off as a bum fuck here. Uh Chapman. No. <laughs> sister. Uh, I'll look into it. Very good. Right, so I've got a question. I thought you were Kevin. <laughs> no, I am Big D. So you were just lying? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Damn. What else did you lie about? What? Uh, well, the people we found were actually vampires. Uh, we actually took them hostage, and we actually planted those lies. We owned them, and I fell out of the window on purpose because I was here. Hello, I am hostage number four. Blimey. That kind of sucks. I'm a terrible detective. It's <laughs> fine. Besides, you're a degenerate ghoul whose brain is polluted with vampire sludge. Of course you couldn't mess my indomitable intellect. You calling someone a degenerate is very... Pray your next words carefully. Okay, consider this. Fuck you. <laughs> it's odd how you turn from the small, bleak British man on your license into a giant Middle Eastern meat stain. <laughs> I really like an online ad that distracted me from the whole interview. Yeah, just insult your new master. That's a surefire way to get yourself not eaten. Oh, I'm sure we will get along just fine. Now. <laughs> Let us go ride the miniature steam locomotive. All right, but I need to be heading home to the kids soon, so maybe we should do the ghouling thing first. Yeah, well, I need to get home to my horse, and you don't see me stressing out about it. I want to ride the funny little train. That's not. We can drink blood on the train. Come on, let us go. <laughs> oh, bring the train. Oh, <laughs> did you even check if it was open? We will commandeer it. Come on, <laughs> Perfect. These are so good. It's so good. You have listened to an audio drama by Ogre Popinan with voice work by Speaker Deed. As okay, there's a little bit after their Stella little credit things. Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman and Arendil as Kevin. Artwork by Rude Ruby Conte, Off Hawker, and Eliphas. I just. Oh my gosh. Macker. Sound composition by Alpha Booza. Mixing by Stringstorm. Video composition by Alpha Booza. With lead writer. Oh wow, logged me out. <laughs> Alpha Booza. Special thanks to Blessed for not working on this script. Portions of the materials are the copyrights and trademarks of Paradox Interactive AB and are used with permission. All rights reserved. For more information, please visit worldofdarkness.com. Visit patreon.com slash alphabooza for updates every other week. Thank you for listening and good evening. Stringstorm does a good narration. What? That's creepy. What is this?
<laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what that was. Uh. That, oh my gosh, just, <sighs> those are great. Those are all great. I love them. I'm sorry that I hadn't watched the other ones, um, but before someone had requested that I react to all of them, I had already watched the other two episodes and one of the audio logs. So I figured I could do at least one of those and I might do the one with, um, kitten next week we'll see um i may be streaming tomorrow to make up for not doing so yesterday so if i do i might watch it tomorrow but it's like 45 minutes so i don't know i've got to decide on that but i do good work i can't wait for arc two that was just arc one and i guess parts of arc one um i'm really interested to see where they take that where they take that story. Uh, if you have not checked their stuff out, then you absolutely should. And um, I, I haven't said this before, and I probably should more often, but if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to see it live or even have a chance to suggest some things I should react to, come over to Twitch. I stream usually Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So... You can come over and one of the channel rewards uh, after you've hung out and watched for a while is that you can suggest things like this for me to react to. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Treasure me. I see beyond the sea. 